Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name's Tianon and today I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I bought in September. Now I do have nine books to talk about today, however a lot of these are from subscription boxes. I then have some special editions that I bought from book subscription companies, however they are separate from the monthly bookish subscriptions. And then I also have two books from Vinted, so all in all I haven't done too badly this month. But I do have some boxes of books down here that I haven't actually unboxed yet. I'm waiting to film another unboxing video just because I know you guys love those. And so even though I did technically buy more books than this in September, you're not gonna see those ones just yet. All in all though, I have a really good mix of books that I'm very excited to show you guys, so without further ado, let's just dive into the haul. First up, I have the two books that I received in my first Your Paper Quest box. For those of you who haven't seen it, I did post an unboxing video for these two books. Your Paper Quest did reach out to me asking if I would film an unboxing video for their new bookish subscription box, which I of course said yes to because they are a new bookish company from the UK whose mission is to get more recognition for self-published authors. All of their books are indies and each month they have a different genre of books that you will be receiving. Not only that, they also have a bookish community tab where you can chat to other readers and also ask the authors some questions which they will then hopefully answer in an interview which is such a lovely and personal touch. I really loved working with this company and I did receive two very interesting sounding books. The first of those is Troop of Shadows by Jennings Sabrinsky, which is a Wild West inspired fantasy book. Now I'm not going to talk too much about these books because I do have that dedicated unboxing video, but I'm really glad that this is one that I received in the box because I wouldn't have necessarily bought it myself. I do love the cover, that definitely would have drawn me in, but I'm not sure whether I personally would have gone out and bought it. So the fact that I received it in that box is lovely. And the second book I received is Mordecax by by Mark McCarricka, which is book one in the Creatures of Flynn series. Now, very differently to the first one, I feel like if I saw this cover in a bookstore, I wouldn't pick it up. However, the synopsis for this has me so intrigued. This is another fantasy book. However, it's also a little bit dystopian. We have a plague in here that rips through our main character's village and a young doctor has come up with a treatment called the Mordant Sleep. And it just says, swept along by dark rumors, guilty secrets, and ancient powers, Harriet is drawn into the shadowy conflict between mordancy and medicine and finds that perfection can be deadlier than any plague. Out of these two books, I definitely feel like Mordicax is more my type of thing, but I am very excited to get to both. I was hoping to get to them by the end of the year, but I'm not sure if that's going to be the case now just because I have so many other books that I would like to get to. However, I am trying to prioritise books by indie authors, so who knows, I may do a reading vlog for these to try and prioritise them, but I'm very thankful once again to your your paper quest for partnering up with me for that unboxing and I'm very happy to have received two new fantasy books from self-published authors that I will hopefully end up enjoying. Then the next two books I have are the books that I bought off Vinted and those are Murder on the Orient Express and Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie, however these are the movie tie-in editions. I recently went to see the newest movie release for this franchise which is A Haunting in Venice based off of Halloween Party and I really enjoyed it guys. I have had a really good time with all of the movie adaptations with Kenneth Branagh in who is the new Poirot. It's a very different take on the murder mysteries however I do appreciate that and there is something very fresh and new about it as well. So I fell into a bit of a vintage haul the other day and I actually stumbled upon these. I wasn't searching for them however I saw these covers. Both of them popped up pretty close to each other and I just fell in love. I feel like I've never actually seen these covers before but this is what they look like. I like that they're quite similar in style as well. And these are two of my favourite Agatha Christie books, as they are for a lot of people. They have so much hype for good reason, and yeah, I just wanted different editions of these. I am planning on buying myself a copy of A Haunting in Venice as well. I think it's £5 on Amazon right now, and I have added it to my wish list. I just haven't taken the plunge yet. I don't know why. It's a very different vibe to these two, and I don't know if they're going to make a different cover, but I will pop that one up on screen now so that you can see what it's like. 
like and yeah it's just a different vibe so I wasn't sure whether I wanted to get it but I think I will just for consistency's sake I feel like I'll kick myself down the line if I don't own it so it might pop up in one of my next hauls but in case you don't know these are both murder mystery novels written by Agatha Christie who is the queen of crime and one of my favourite crime authors. I feel like you'll know what these are about but essentially Murder on the Orient Express is a locked room murder mystery where one passenger is killed on the Orient Express, there is a snowstorm and so the train is stuck in a specific destination for a period of time. Luckily Detective Hercule Poirot is on board and decides to try and solve the case. And then in Death on the Nile, again it's pretty similar but in this one Hercule Poirot is on holiday and a young couple comes up to him and asks him for some help. They have recently married, however the jilted ex-girlfriend of the groom has been following them along on their honeymoon and they are fearful for their lives. Poro's on holiday, he feels like nothing is amiss, the girl is just following them, she's not doing anything illegal essentially. However, when they all go on a boat trip on the Nile, one of the people in this couple are killed and so again we do have more of an isolated murder mystery here where all of our characters are stuck on the boat and it's up to Poirot to figure out which one of them committed the crime. As I mentioned, these are two of my favourite Agatha Christie books. In terms of the films, I preferred Murder on the Orient Express, then I think I liked A Haunting in Venice, and then Death on the Nile, just because for some reason I didn't like Gal Gadot as our main character in Death on the Nile and so it did hinder my enjoyment a little bit. Nothing against her, I just don't feel like she was acting it out very well and she wasn't a compelling main character. However, this one was so interesting. I loved each and every single character and the new film A Haunting in Venice is just a completely different take and is unlike anything we've seen so far. It is very spooky, paranormal and a little bit scary, I'm not gonna lie, but yeah, I had a really good time with it and as I mentioned, it might be popping up in one of my next few hauls. Next up we have The Shattered City by Lisa Maxwell and this is the fourth book in the Last Magician series which I don't actually know if that's the correct name of the series or not. Now you did hear me say that this is book four in the series and I'm very embarrassed to say that I haven't even read the first one yet. I did start it a while ago, I want to say like four years ago now. I tried listening to the audiobook but I just wasn't paying attention to it and so I did put it down. For some reason though I kept buying these books, I feel like I was scared that they were going to go out of print and so now I've ended up with four books in a series that I don't know whether I'm actually going to enjoy or not. Of course I have heard amazing things otherwise I wouldn't have invested so much money into these books. Hannah from A Clockwork Reader really loves this series and I I think it was on her recommendation that I bought the first book. So it's essentially a time travel heist novel and that is the extent of my knowledge. Now of course I'm not going to read you the synopsis for this one and I would read you the synopsis for the first book but it's behind my ghosties here and I don't really want to mess with them in case they fall down. But essentially it is a historical fiction novel with time travel elements to it and a heist. I feel like I remember there being a relic that these people need to get hold of. There are are magicians involved as well and this is definitely making me realize that I need to read the first book so that I can actually find out what's going on and then I can move on to these. This is scaring me though because it is massive so it's very intimidating but it may be a series that I prioritize in 2024 because I've just heard amazing things. I feel like it's going to be a series for me and these books are just so pretty so I would love to read them and see what the covers represent and hopefully fall in love with the world, the plot and the characters characters as well. And then we have made it to my subscription box books, however the first two are not part of a monthly bookish subscription. These books were sold separate to them and guys, when you see these, you are going to be blown away because I have the Illumicrate editions of Strange the Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. Now I have just filmed an unboxing video for these, which should be live by the time this video goes up because I wouldn't want to spoil it otherwise, and I cannot tell you how much I love these. Strange the Dreamer is one of my all-time favourite books anyway and so having these editions that are just so pretty means the world and yeah I just absolutely love them. I almost missed out on these actually because I didn't know that they were going live until I got the email letting me know so I jumped on that 
I hesitated for a split second thinking do I actually need them but I'm so glad I went ahead and bought them because they are just the most beautiful books they have gorgeous stenciled edges and they do actually have a lot more exclusive things throughout which I'm not going to go through here because as I mentioned I do have that dedicated unboxing video which I will leave linked up above and down below so please do check that out if you want to see the naked hardcovers as well as the end pages because they will honestly blow you away these two books are some of the prettiest that I own and I'm so so, so happy that I have these and that they represent my love for such an amazing series. For those of you who don't know, in Strange the Dreamer we follow our main character Laszlo Strange who, if you couldn't tell, is a bit of a dreamer. He works in a library but his one true passion has always been the lost city of Weep. He's practically obsessed with it and has always wanted to get the opportunity to visit there, however he feels like he isn't really the person to do that. He is not brave, he's not big and muscly, he's just a little old librarian. However, when the Godslayer appears one day and asks for volunteers to go to Weep, of course Laszlo jumps at the chance. No one actually knows what happened in Weep and why it got cut off from the rest of the world, however Laszlo has been having some strange dreams on the journey to Weep. That in involve a blue-skinned goddess who seems to have some answers to his questions. Now that's all I'm gonna say. I said in my unboxing video but I'm desperate for a reread of the series. I've been desperate for a reread ever since I first read it because I just fell in love with the story completely. So if you would like me to host a read-along for this duology next year please do let me know. I would love to do that and spread my love for the Strange the Dreamer duology even further. It's a fantastic set of books. If you haven't read it I would highly recommend but be prepared to get emotionally invested in these because yeah it's a lot but in the best way I absolutely love them and I would highly recommend to anyone. Then the Illumicrate book of the month for September was A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed which again I do have an unboxing for I will leave it linked up above and down below. This is one that I'm not nearly as excited about which I do go into more in my unboxing video but essentially this writer is once again jumping on the bandwagon of using Welsh in their story and I don't think it's been properly researched so I'm not sure whether I'm actually going to read this one. If you have read it and enjoyed it let me know. I'm thinking of maybe trying to get through the first 100 pages and if I don't like those then obviously I will stop reading but I do want to give this book a fair chance because I've heard really good things. It's just the fact that I've heard really good things from people who aren't Welsh and I'm just scared that the Welsh representation and the Welsh language in this isn't going to be portrayed accurately and it's just going to be thrown in haphazardly to kind of say look look there's Welsh in here, look at this interesting word or something like that so yeah I'm not too sure, it's another beautiful edition and it doesn't have a little snippet here but essentially we follow two main characters, one of them love an author's work, one of them doesn't and is trying to prove that the author is a fraud and then they come together in a remote house on a cliffside to try and piece together the mystery of this author and his works. That is essentially all I know, I know it's a dark atmospheric book which definitely draws me in but I just, I don't know guys, it may not be the one for me and I don't want to be a negative Nancy see but unfortunately that's bound to happen when my culture is once again used in a fantasy setting by an author that is not Welsh. And then moving on before the mood of this video completely shifts we have the September book of the month for Fairy Loot which is Son of Blood and Ruin by Mara Lee Larez which definitely sounds like something that's going to be right on my street. Once again this is a beautiful book. It is in the adult Fairy Loot box however I have heard a lot of people mention that this is marketed as YA in a lot of places so do be aware of that before diving into this but this essentially sounds like a feminist retelling of Black Panther which has me sold. There is a little quote on the back so I will just read it. It says what's this I hear about a mass vigilante who calls herself Pantera. They say she's the finest swordswoman in the new world, that she is a witch and that she will be the end of us all. So essentially we have a noble woman in here who is a kind of vigilante figure as well however nobody knows so there's a secret identity trope in here which I definitely love. She is a badass swordsman as it mentions and I just feel like this is going to be a really interesting book and I've actually just found the spoiler card which says that it's a gender-bent sorrow fantasy retelling featuring a heroic warrior sorceress, a pursuit of justice, shape-shifting and Mesoamerican mythology. So yeah, 
definitely excited about this one. This is one of the better sounding subscription box books that we've had in a while and it's another beautiful edition that I'm just absolutely obsessed with. So there we have it guys, these are all of the books that I bought in September. I feel like it's definitely a good mix of books and I am very excited for each and every single one of these. Please do let me know your spoiler free thoughts on any of these if you have read them down below. I love chatting to you guys about the books I've hauled and your opinions also sway the order that I read them. If you have made it this far through into the video and would like to let me know that you're still here, please go ahead and leave me a lizard emoji down in the comments. This was the book on top of the stack and how can I not choose the lizard emoji? I have no idea what the significance of this lizard or gecko or whatever it is is going to be, but it's a very intriguing cover and I feel like we haven't had a lizard emoji before, so if you don't have anything in particular that you would like to say but you would like to let me know that you're still here, please go ahead and comment that now. As well as that, please don't forget to click the like button if you like this video and the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content from me but that is it for me today guys thank you so so much for watching it truly does mean the world to me and i will see you soon in my next video goodbye